Hello everyone and welcome to the Oberon Kingdom interview. This is going to be a new series on Oberon Kingdom where we are going to speak to some artists, some people who make music, some basically creative people. And today I'm joined by someone as you can see on the screen known as Voken. And he is from the Netherlands. He is an artist who makes music. Uh, he stu studies it and hey Voken. <laughs> Hi, so my name is Vokun, uh, Joey actually, um, I'm studying at the Hermann Broads Academy, I'm 20 years old, and I make EDM future-based music, so that's who I am. Yes, and I have your SoundCloud open right now on the screen, and uh, as most people can see, there's a lot of stuff that you have on here, and there are some names that people probably know, some that they don't know, but uh, first questions first, how did you find uh, Oberon Kingdom? Well, I actually play League of Legends myself, like for five years or something, six. And after I found the concept of custom skins, I actually um, like kind of joined the community. Like I used uh, map skins a lot uh, with the client Booksy, I believe. And it was pretty fun. And actually, uh, the last couple of years, it was kind of shut down. So I didn't even bother. But um, lately, I scroll on Instagram. And I saw that custom skins exist again. So I find out from like, where did it go? Like I, I searched for map skins again and I saw that uh, it changed to Oberon Kingdom. So I checked their website and saw the Discord and actually joined and it's a pretty fun community. So uh, yeah, that's how. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember which skin you saw on Instagram? I think most people saw the Yasuo skin with the yeah, Yane the behind wheelchair. it. Yeah, the, yeah, the wheelchair, wheelchair Yasuo. <laughs> yeah, but also just um, just like a concept art of skins, and I was just curious, like, does it still exist? Yeah, basically for uh, those who do not know, custom skins were shut down because the files were changed from red files to what files. And because we didn't have the technology back then, uh, custom skins basically were shut down for a year. But then some uh, genius people like Krauser and uh, Moonshadow, they actually found a way to access the Watt files, and that's why custom skins were possible again. So a uh, shout out to Krauser and uh, Moonshadow, and also, I forgot, Morilli, Morilli. They're <laughs> working really hard on making custom skins possible. But uh, that is custom skins, we are here for music. Yes. And when did you find out that you actually are interested in music? Around what age do you think? And what was the situation? Yeah, it was like um, with with friends, like when I was 12. Um, it was like a primary school. And we actually sat down and we saw a YouTube video of someone using FL Studio 9, I believe. And uh, we actually kind of liked what they did. And um, so one guy found... A, um, like the program he used and actually a uh, quick crack it like he was a really good uh, computer expert at the time so um so he actually gave us all the program and we all started making music together and some of us are still busy making music some of us became a dj and some of us just uh just let it be but i'm currently uh trying to be like a real artist so i'm still going on the train <laughs> i'm 20 now so it's been eight years um yeah it, it's been a really uh thoughtful process uh like could i even make it like uh when i discovered the hammer road academy it was like yo i should be on this school but then i realized like yo they only accept like 25 people out of thousands that apply <laughs> because uh, martin garrix was on the school and other big uh, big names um so yeah it was really 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 hard <laughs> uh to to make um to make myself how do you say it like exceptional like to be uh to be accepted Feel like you're worthy of becoming one of the very best creators yeah in the world. exactly exactly but and i do I'm believe also... that uh, being accepted on that school is giving that motivation boost that you probably needed yeah it's like amazing like all my classmates are also just amazing like everyone makes good music and you just vibe with each other it's a really chill school yeah, it's amazing. And um, I have your SoundCloud open right now. So which one do you want me to uh, play? Which one do you feel like is uh, going to leave a good impression? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Um, the first I one believe... I'm seeing at the top is Imogen Heap with Hide and Seek. But 
Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty cool one. But that was actually um, it's a remix of a remix. Like uh, I heard the Bishu remix, and then I heard the drop, and I was like, "Yo, that's not what I expected." And that's what the most comments in uh, on that SoundCloud um, uh, link say. Like they do not like the drop. Like it, the whole vibe of the song is pretty cool, but like the drop kind of ruins it. So I actually thought like, yo, maybe I should just completely flip it around and get like a chill drop and it actually worked out. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good one to review actually. It has 800 likes, 107 shares, 22,000 views. It's uh, or plays I should say. So I'm yeah. gonna go ahead and play this one then. So, which you only did the um, the drop parts, right? Uh, no, actually, I also changed uh, a lot of the break um, because it had like a, a really chill vibe, but I thought like the drums could be a lot better. I thought uh, I added a melody, like the cute little whistle thing. Um, I actually got some new arrangements. I I changed I changed quite a lot for uh, for a small remix actually. <laughs> Yeah, I can see the comments here, and all the comments are like, this is really nice and everything. Uh, I think the drop starts somewhere around here. Yeah, as, as we probably can uh, hear here, it's just... <laughs> it transitions so smoothly into the next part. So, that's a flip, and which one uh, is your original? Do you... Um, I'm seeing here Vulcan and All Stark living on the water, but uh, is there a different one that you uh, uh, want to share? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, I have. Um, if you scroll down a bit, I have uh, one release, uh, "Let You Go," it's called, and that was one one of my first self releases. Um, that one's actually, yeah, it, it was really experimental, but it also like developed my own sound. So it was it was a really special song to me. I found it over here. I'm going to play it and then I'll let the people who are going to watch this decide for themselves. <laughs> and uh, people, here's a very first off debut by Vulcan on Oberon Kingdom. Here we go. I can wait a thousand days. You never wait for me. You never wait for me. Even when I ran away. You're all that I could see, you're all that I could see When I could hardly walk on my own I had to lift myself out of the trench below Haven't I suffered enough to let you go? Let you go, let you go now You love me right for a minute Even though I try so hard to forget it All you do is pave the way so I could reinvent myself You can watch me grow And there we have the one minute out of this track. If you guys want to listen to the full thing, go to soundcloud.com slash joeyvoken. You can see the link at the top. And uh, yeah, as we could hear this like already on like the very next level. So it's not like someone amateur that we're uh, speaking about right here. And uh, how did you come up with this song? Or uh, what's like the concept of it? Well, um, it's inspired by one of my favorite artists, uh, San Holo. Uh, you can quite hear, kind of hear his sound in it. Um, yeah, it was just very special to me because um, San Holo is like my biggest inspiration. And I always wanted to be like him. And this is one, like, one of the songs that actually accomplished it, um, especially for the first drop. But when I turn on um, to the break, like the... Like the I have a very emotional break uh, breakdown in it, like with violins and and the cool stuff. Um, I later switched on to something uh, I didn't expect it to, but it worked out really well. Um, it's a kind of different fight, but like it, yeah, I don't know. It's very simple, but it, it's very cool. I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> but yeah, it's um, this song actually started with um, with that inspiration, and so I created the chords. I I played a lot with different sounds. Um, I, I, I resampled things, I uh, reversed things, I uh, created different melodies. It was, 
Yeah, it was it was very weird to actually make this song because it was all experimental. I never expected to be this as what it is now. <laughs> yeah, it's incredibly well. I'm also playing it on the background right now as we're speaking. And uh, yeah, this is basically probably a very good example of showing what kind of a musician you are and what kind of uh, music you are want to create. Is this the kind of style you want to maintain for the next 20 years, let's say? Or do you feel like you want to change it up a little bit? Well, I'm actually really open in genres. Um, I actually love everything. <laughs> like, even to classical stuff or some metal stuff I like. But, like, um, EDM will always stay. Uh, especially this bright future bass kind of vibe. Uh, but it's not like the standard future bass you would expect. Like, uh, future bass um, as a stereotype is uh, with very big chords and it's just really impactful. But I've always tried to, to do something different. Um, even though this song was inspired, I actually tried to make it as original as possible, and that really worked out. Um, but yeah, I'll, I always try to, to be different than anyone else. Like, when I started creating music, um, I always get like feedback like, yo, this is only something you can make. But they kind of did it as a, as a funny thing, like they, they laughed about it because it was really weird. Uh, but I actually took it as a compliment, like, yo, I can only do this. <laughs> Like some other friends were making like uh, pop music, uh, radio style music, mainstream stuff. And I was the only one getting real crazy. So um, I actually want to maintain this, like this style, like being crazy. Um, but I've also uh, experimented with lots of deeper stuff, like darker. Um, well, it's not really darker, but it's just more experimental. Um, there's something called granular synthesis. And that really fucks your mind. It's like really insane. Um, it's like getting in um, in random random rhythms. Um, it's very hard to follow, but when you follow it, it's actually insane. I have like some artists I look up to, to uh, that make that. Um, some of which are even uh, studying at my school, and that's amazing. Like he's one year above, and he's making music that I actually like too. So I kind of want to make that too. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's 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 a bit like, um, as you could, as I said, like San Holo is like one of my biggest inspiration. But like also uh, Porter Robinson also make kind of the same kind of music, um, but they're their own selves. Like they do not copy someone, um, and I'm still in that phase that I kind of copy stuff from people. And I want to develop myself so much more that I, myself too, that I'm just someone um, that people can look up to, like I look at them. You get what I mean? <laughs> yeah, especially in 2021, I feel like if we talk about 40 years ago, you just make music and if people like it, they're just going to follow you. And if not, it's all fine. But there is, yeah, we live in this age where people already have the formula <laughs> to success, let's say. And people are trying to like just follow this formula and reach the point where they become successful the same way. Yeah. But then there are people who want to find it on their own. They want to create their own own style. They don't really care that much about money. They just care about making something good and becoming someone unique. And I feel yeah, like exactly, uh, that's the kind of person you want to be as well. Especially yeah. with these things that I'm seeing here. And uh, Let You Go is probably a very good example for... Um, Showing that is very different from the formula that we're used to. Yeah, it's not like a radio style music or anything. It's just something you can listen to and enjoy. Like I have friends who actually make uh, music that's popular on the radio right now, um, and I kind of think that's lame. Like, <laughs> bro, just make your own music. Like, um, like people are making a lot of slap house now, and it's becoming kind of annoying like it's the same bass the same rhythm the same stuff <laughs> like um it's kind of funny but like people get really successful with it like millions of streams and i'm like is that even deserved like i don't know i mean if it sounds good then it's okay but like it's like a kind of love-hate relationship with it like it's not like your true self is you're just doing it for the for the fame actually 
Yeah, that's the idea I get a lot with pop music these days. It's always yeah. uh, four lines, you get the chorus, four different lines, chorus, 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 and then the ending. And that's yeah, basically perfect example. That's it's, the, it's TikTok, every single actually. pop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> TikTok is a perfect example. Everything that's a hit in TikTok that is just a hit on the radio and it gets millions of streams just because people dance on it. <laughs> yeah, so. That is what music looks like right now. What are your predictions, or not predictions? What do you want? What do you want the music industry to look like in ten years from now? Currently, it is taken over by pop music, most likely. Uh, but what kind of music do you think should be dominating the world in ten years from now? Um, if you're the see... one, if you're the one who gets to decide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I see uh, most people do is actually um, uh, go back to to what's real. Like, um, uh, Porter Robinson dropped an album, and it's surprisingly indie, actually, as what he used to make. Um, it was before; it was all electronic and all kind of stuff. But now uh, he actually switches to. Um, to more indie stuff, to like more chill stuff, um, things with real drums, uh, things with, yeah, it's not really realism because um, he still uses uh, many effects and many great stuff, but it feels very real. It feels very alive, like more alive than his stuff before. And it's the same with other artists. I see them dropping dropping new singles, which are actually so different than what they used to make, but it's more real. Um, like real drums, uh, real vocals, like not really real vocals, but like um, better lyrics, like better understanding of, of what you're hearing. And that actually amazes me. I, I can't wait for the moment that I'm on that same place that I actually find myself uh, creating something real. Like now I'm just making music because it's fun. And I, yeah, I love it so much. But I can't wait for the moment to actually uh, understand my music. And I hope people could um, understand that too. Like, I, I think there is a moment that people would actually find me out. And it's just a matter of time, I believe. And I, I will keep releasing no matter what. Um, currently, I'm trying to focus on uh, getting on labels so, um, so I can get more exposure. And later, I want to just self-release like a ton. Like labels can be so hard, man. Labels, labels are just so so damn difficult. They often don't respond. They often just decline your track for no reason. But like um, two weeks later, they say like, "Oh wait, actually, it's kind of cool." But like, can you chase it up a little bit? And then the little bit is like everything. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to change like almost all the tracks just so they want it. But like, that's not that's not what you made it's like you make a track and you're proud of the result but if a label says like yo you need to change this up and, uh, and then it becomes more viable then i don't think it's like then i don't think it's viable for myself because i didn't want this i wanted to be like this way but yeah um what was i telling you again <laughs> oh yeah it was like uh for the music um yeah, I hope just it becomes more real than it already is. Like that people actually um, neglect the, the the mainstream stuff and they actually find out what, what their true music taste is. Like currently on the radio, just people um, people put on the radio and if they hear a song they like, then they actually just play that song over and over again. But um, there are just so little people that actually uh, want to find their own true taste in music, like they just they just go on Spotify, click in a click a playlist and just shuffle in it, and then that's okay. But like, what is your true true music taste? That's my question for ten years. I hope people will find it, and that people will actually enjoy what they're listening to. I agree to that more than anything. I have two more questions. The first one being. You mentioned that you find music very fun and that you're doing it for fun right now. What are your other hobbies? Give us an insight on who Joey is. All right. Yeah, I'm actually a kind of carefree person. Um, I use to skate a lot. Um, just just go out in the, in skating in the winds or anything at a skate park with friends. 
Um, I also just like general gaming, like I'm a gamer, of course. Um, that's what also takes up a lot of time. It's very hard to actually separate music and gaming because it's both addictive. <laughs> um, yeah, who I am. Um, I actually join parties a lot. Like, like every weekend I'm away with friends, <laughs> um, you know, just getting some spare time, like, because in the, in the work days, you're actually just on full work mode and you don't have time for, for friends or anything. So the weekends, I usually try to do everything at once. Uh, it's kind of, kind of breathtaking. Like, um, I'm getting really tired sometimes, but like, it's cool. It's cool. It's like, it's fun. So why not? <laughs> and I'm still young. So, uh, it's all cool for me. Yeah, I can relate. I work currently five days a week, and then in the weekend, I just feel like doing everything together. That's why we are <laughs> having the interview right now, because if you would yeah. ask me on uh, Wednesday, I would be like, I'm not home. <laughs> at any point, you would ask me, I'll be like, I'm at work, I'm, I'm not home. And that's why I feel like Saturdays and Sunday are definitely one of those days that we, everyone should appreciate it a bit more. Exactly. And what's your favorite food? And then we're gonna go, go on to the next. My uh... favorite food. All right, I'm a, I'm a big Italian food lover, like uh, spaghetti or um, spaghetti, lasagna, lasagna, pizza. Pizza, it's amazing. Like the combination of molten cheese and and uh, the tomato sauce and uh, most of the meat, uh, it's just amazing. Like the the taste is heavenly. <laughs> but like I'm also into Spanish food. Uh, Spanish food is also cool. I I have family spent in Spain, so. I used to go there, uh, go there a lot and then just eat uh, whatever they have. I'm not used to, to all the names, so I don't know what it's called, but it's good. <laughs> um, Dutch food is kind of, yeah, it's really weird. It's like, <laughs> it, it's not really a thing. It's just um, get random ingredients and put it all together and in a big bowl and then you have Dutch food. <laughs> like, it's not and really then special. You, then you have a cup um, Then you have a cup soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, it tastes good. Like, <laughs> I'll say it tastes completely fine. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that that's it actually. All right, then we're gonna move on to the final question. All right. It is currently twenty twenty six. Where is uh, Joey Voken? What is he doing right now, and what are his achievements? All right. Um... And then the same question for twenty thirty one. So five and ten years from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, well, of course, I'd be I'd be graduated from the Hammer Broad Academy. Uh, I hope at least. <laughs> but like, um, uh, the school forces you so much to to be an artist to actually get big. Like my teachers are also uh, really big themselves, so they share all their information. They help you a ton. Um, so I hope I actually have all the knowledge I need. Um, to actually maintain myself as an artist. Um, for the time uh, now, I want to focus on labels, as I said before, and then later self-release. So I can actually uh, get out as many tracks as I want because I'm, a, I'm quite a fast worker. I make lots of tracks in due time. But like um, for labels, it's hard to just contact them and just get in touch. Uh, so it's hard to to get the number the songs out there, but like for five years, I hope um, I'm independent. That I actually have uh, my own team of people that actually want to, yeah, that actually want to go out and and make my music out there. Um, I hope it will be successful. Um, but of course, it doesn't have to be this way. Like I could also go to a label and uh, stay there actually, because labels can be good. They can be in really great, um, really great heights. And um, so what would be cool too, is that if I'm joining a label that they're given a show like Los Angeles, I, I don't know, but like if they give a show on Los Angeles and, I, and they actually ask me to, um, to DJ at the party, then I'm, I'm down, you know? Uh, that would be also cool for five years. But like in 10 years, then I want to be really living of music. I want to create as much as, as, much as I can um, and just enjoy, enjoy all the people's reactions to it. 
Um, I want to be whatever I I am at that point. I don't want to be someone else. I want to be myself. Then, um, yeah, that's exactly my goal for for ten years. Yeah, actually, <laughs> as you said, you've already done this for eight years. I do believe that you will not lose a motivation or interest in this for another ten years from now. And uh, no. <laughs> I hope that nothing in life happens where uh, it gets taken away. Most people, from what I know, they are interested in something when they are like. 18 and then they lose the motivation for it for whatever reason and yeah, exactly. i always appreciate it when people find like a plan and stick to that plan wherever and if anything they just evolve that one plan while still maintaining what they wanted to do so uh yeah i do hope that uh everything goes as exactly as you plan it to go <laughs> that's very kind man thanks <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I'm gonna, with that, I'm gonna leave the interview. Uh, I'm gonna say quickly, I am Pentaking. Uh, you can follow me at Pentaking TV pretty much everywhere. Uh, I did this for Oberon Kingdom, OberonKingdom.com. There, this interview will be placed there. It will be placed in Oberon Kingdom on YouTube. So go check that out as well. And uh, any final shout outs, what to follow and so on. You have uh, 20 seconds. So uh, you can follow me at Instagram, Facebook, everything you can mention. Uh, mostly at Joey Voken uh, as my name, but also if you just search Voken or any music uh, distribution, you can find me. And just follow me, check my music, and let me know what you think. I always read messages and I always reply. So go on with it. <laughs> exactly in 20 seconds. Professional right here. <laughs> Thank you all for watching and listening. Go follow Joey on SoundCloud and uh, support him. And uh, with that, this was the very first interview on Oberon Kingdom. More to come. And uh, wish you all a good evening. <laughs>